On this slide, we talk about line bundles and Picard groups. So to start with, we need to recall certain aspects of these uh, shifted modules. So notice that we had OD and you want to tensor it with OE. So here tensor product is actually nothing but a product. So this relationship holds. Why does it hold? So you take any element in OXD, so it has degree D. Degree D means the fraction has degree D. Numerator, degree of numerator minus degree of denominator is D. Similarly, OE is degree E. You multiply these two together, these two fractions of degree D and degree E, you get a fraction of degree D plus E. Again, fraction of degree D means degree of numerator minus degree of denominator is D. So this, this is very simple, yeah, just simple multiplication. In particular, you take D as 1 and E as 1, so you have mapped from O1, tensor O1 to O2. So let us now recall the definition of line bundle. So line bundle locally, like on an open set U, looks like OXU. So on PN, on the projective space, we have already seen that OX is nothing but a graded ring. Yeah, so this the grading is standard by the degree of the homogeneous polynomials. And we have also seen the dimension of this space. Now OXD looks exactly like OXU. Yeah, because it is also a graded ring. The only difference in OXD and OX is that the grading is shifted. But it looks like a graded ring. So it looks exactly the same. So the question is that how many such rings we have? So how many such OXU exist? Yeah, so all these OXU look same, look similar, but some of them are different because of the grading. So how many such exist? So obviously OX by itself exists with no shifting, then by shifting by 1, shifting by 2, shifting by 3, shifting by 4 and so on and shifting in the opposite direction, OX minus 1, OX minus 2, OX minus 3. We will later on show why OX1 and OX minus 1 are dual to each other, OX2, OX minus 2 are dual to each other, in general OXN, OX minus N are dual to each other. So on PN, all of these corresponding to 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, so on, all these are different line bundles. Yeah, and all these line bundles come from shifting. So we have a map from integers to pick of p n, and you can see, you know, take an integer, take it to O of t. And uh, we still have to make sense of these OX minus 1, OX minus 2, OX minus 3 and so on. So we will make sense of this. I mean, it is basically will remain the same. Now in OX minus 1, degree of denominator will be greater than degree of numerator by 1. Yeah, so just the opposite. And we will see why it comes like that and why it is dual. So let us, uh, so now you can see the homomorphism from integers to pick of p and yeah, you just take an integer and you have corresponding line bundle to it. So now we define the Picard group for any algebraic set x over k, the pick group is the set of isomorphism class of line bundles over x. So we have already seen that the pick of p n is integers.
So what is the group operation? You just take the tensor product of two line bundles. Just like we have taken tensor product of OD and OE to form OD plus E. So group operation is L tensor M. Zero element is OX because L is a OX module. So in general this is the definition and we are always working in commutative algebra so we can uh, switch. The inverse is L star but L star is nothing but the dual map. So this is nothing but homomorphism from here to here. So let us see, check if this is a dual map. So homomorphism is say a map phi which takes a line bundle to the ring OX. Again line bundle locally looks like OX but as we saw in the PN case it was shifted. So if it is not shifted at all you basically just would have one. I mean if you cannot shift or do anything in most cases there could be just one line bundle for the entire space. So notice that L star tensor L will give you phi of f and you can see lies in O of x very clear yeah. So why L star is inverse element. Now I'm just writing the notation that for n greater than 0 what you need to do, for n less than 0 what you need to do. So line bundle tensor n, what if n is positive, n is 0 and n is negative. So that is the definition. So over projective space it will make much more sense. Yeah. So O of n is O1 tensor with O1 tensor with O1. You have already seen O1 tensor with O1 is O2, O2 tensor with O1 is O3 and so on. So this you can also write it as O1 tensor n. Yeah, so n greater than 0. It is just O for n equals to 0 and O minus 1 for the dual space. Now we have to still make sense for O minus 1. So let us spend time on making sense for O minus 1. So first notice that if you tensor O1 with O minus 1, 1 minus 1 will give you 0. So basically O1 tensor O minus 1 they are dual to each other you can see you end up back in O. So now we see it more concretely. So you want to go from O1 to O. How would you go? Now O1 has degree of numerator is one more than degree of denominator. In O the degree because O is not shifted at all, the degree of numerator is same as degree of denominator. So what you do? You multiply by 1 by f. So 1 by f has degree, f has degree 1. That means 1 by f, this entire thing, this fraction 1 by f has degree minus 1. So what you have done? You have taken O1, you have multiplied it by 1 by f and therefore you end up back in O. So you have basically shifted the degree by minus 1 yeah so you you had you were one further along and now you are one back and that is pretty much it and that is why it is dual so basically o of minus 1 is what it shifts the degree back so it is degree of denominator is greater than the degree of numerator in o of minus 1 degree of denominator minus degree of numerator is 1 so precisely dual